So, the story of Living Do so far, and what's happening. So, Living Do started with three friends who all met through the sport of gymnastics. After a couple years of being friends and playing games with each other through Steam, Nate asked me, Leo, if I wanted to start a YouTube channel with Barney and him. Naturally, I gave him an ambitious and passionate no. Uh, <laughs> I had already tried the whole YouTube thing for a few months worth of gaming, and I was awful. Just blatant disgrace to everything anyone has ever seen. I was supposed to be running a multi-channel network with my friends Clay, Theo, and Colt, but that went nowhere. I was the only one releasing consistent videos. Theo didn't even want to be a part of it, despite him playing the most video games out of all of us. Clay had a habit of deleting his videos for no given reason. And Colt couldn't figure out how to use the editing software. So he never really got into it. I eventually gave up and Theo, Colt, and I stopped being friends, unrelated to the YouTube thing. But that's a story for another time. So I wasn't really jonesing for another hit of YouTube disappointment. But after a while, Nate and Barney talked me into it, and I actually got really excited to try again. We needed a name for the channel though. Nate and I spitballed ideas back and forth. I set up some parameters, no words like productions or gaming. Nothing over three words long, and we had to pick a name that when you search for it, we were the first thing to pop up. Nate suggested Living Do, an old name that he had from a long time ago, and it stuck. So that's when Living Do began. Then we began the arduous task of sculpting a theme for the channel. We needed a brand, something that said, Hey, that's from Living Do, right? Or this reminds me of that channel, uh, Living Do, or something. At this time, Nate and I had began playing around with a site called Piskel. Ah, wow! Incredible! Nate had been practicing pixel art and took pixel art classes. I didn't really know much about pixel art, but I think I'm a pretty quick learner, and I'm a natural at formal pencil art and animating. So the channel started a pixel art brand. We eventually found a style that we liked and stuck with it. Minimal detail, but enough to tell who made it and what was happening. Our process was mostly Nate making something, then me editing what he'd made. That's not to say I didn't make anything original or that he didn't also make changes to what I had, but that's generally how it went down. Most of the time, he would make a sprite, then I would animate it. So we started the march, the process of uploading videos as frequently as possible, just throwing everything we could against the wall. As much as we had, uh, as much as we could, as fast as we could, starting with the Dungree no commentary, which wasn't planned to be our first video. I was actually planning on Starbound, I Need Some Space, Episode 1, to be the first video, but Nate had other plans. <laughs> we started making a series... We started making series that we liked, and there was one thing I remember vividly from the past of the channel. Nate started releasing videos weekly, which was what I was doing previously, but I stopped because I got bored editing easily. And Nate told me he didn't want the channel to feel like it was just his. So I started releasing weekly uploads again after that. The plan was that I would release videos on Mondays and Fridays, Nate had Tuesdays and Thursdays, and Barney had Wednesdays and weekends. We wanted to give Barney the golden upload times because we wanted him to be as big as a part of this channel as we were. But he was too busy and his computer couldn't really handle the software well. And he was self-conscious. He had a habit of deleting videos like Clay used to. Rest in peace to Battle Cats video. Our series were a catalyst of hate in early years. 
It was either I was yelling at Nate or he was yelling at me. I didn't want to get mad at him, but I was going through some stuff. I might tell you about that later. So I would often get pissed at Nate for failing to play how I think he should play. It was really dumb, and I'm sorry. Especially in co-op games. Mainly because I felt that if he messed up, and I couldn't complete the level because of him, or worse, if I couldn't carry our team, that I was somehow weak and we failed because it was my fault. And it was easier for me to fester into rage than express my need for validation. I did eventually realize what I was doing, and I was able to work on fixing myself. I think I've made a lot of progress, I've stopped insulting people to break their spirit, and instead try to focus on a more optimistic, proactive aspect of people. It's surprisingly hard. But what I didn't expect was the backlash. After I stopped insulting Nate, he started back at me. And I thought, okay, I deserve this after how I've treated him for the past several months. He should be able to jab back at me for a while. So, for a while, I didn't do anything. I didn't return the toxicity. I just took it and moved on. I started uploading twice a week and Nate started uploading less and less. I think that was because of Nate and his gymnastic schedule and mine stopped mm, mirroring each other's. I think I went to vacation at some point. Nate picked up my slack, thank you for that. But it went right back to status quo after that. BUT THEN! We had our fight. About a little over one year of living due, I was about to take my Japan trip to see my dad over the summer. Nate, Omega, and I were all playing Minecraft. <laughs> it's late, keep that in mind. We're all exhausted, but here's the thing about Minecraft. It's really easy to play. You don't really have to put in any effort to play the bare minimum of Minecraft. It's not an excuse, just an explanation. Omega is talking about a server that he made, and all the mods he put into it. Uh, it was a lot of stuff. But I'm a pretty big fan of mods, as you can see through our content. However, you wouldn't be able to tell through the enthusiasm in my tone of voice. English is my third language, but I think it's more of my lack of social cues. Omega is talking about how his server has guns and zombies, and how you can level up, and the server has currency, and I responded with, that's cool, wow, of course it has currency and guns, why wouldn't it? And I had a, a grand total of zero energy in my voice, which doesn't match the words I'm using at all, and that's what I'm told leads people to believe I'm being sarcastic. So every time I say a goddamn thing, Nate tells me I'm being a dick. And after a while, you know how it goes, I, I lose my cool. And I tell him, I'm not being sarcastic, you brain-dead f***ing moron. Or could you not understand that because I was too sarcastic? Or something along those lines. Then we went silent for a while, and I went to bed after that. So, later in the week, I get a message from him saying that I have no impulse control and that if I want to keep doing this with him, I'm going to have to get my shit together. This was not the response I expected. I expected something a lot less rash. I felt like this was some weird attack. So I clapped back at him, because I was still kind of pissed. I tell him that I feel like I can't say a goddamn thing around him, without him assuming I have shitty intentions. Just imagine everything you say being construed as an insult. You can't speak without thinking you're being a dick. It sucks to feel that way. Like your words are being twisted. Point being, this was probably not the response he expected. So we got into a Discord brawl. Meanwhile, I'm in Japan, and I have to get all my messages and stuff out in intervals. 
And I think of every time Nate threatened to kick me off the channel as a joke. And I think, if I was in his position, I'd probably restrict access to the channel. So in a moment of paranoia, I strip his control over the channel, over the email, I change all the passwords, and make sure every point of access is secured. This was definitely the wrong response. I mean, I know that there's no wrong way to react to something under stress, but if there was a wrong way, then this was it. I didn't want to run Living Do on my own, I never wanted to run this channel. I didn't want to kick off Nate and subsequently Barney since they shared the same e uh, email. But I put more work into this channel than both of them combined, and I wasn't about to lose all my work because Nate has a problem with me. So I got back to the US and I was prepared to talk it out with Nate. But despite what you see on the channel, I find it very hard to talk to him. He's always been very withholding from me. But I saw Nate started uploading on his own channel, and I felt like this was him saying to me, I don't need Living Do. I can make a channel without you, and I don't want to come back. That's what I felt like anyways. Weeks go by, and Nate and I, since we have a mutual friend group, end up on the same call. And when everyone leaves, we get to start talking again. And we eventually get to what happened with the channel. I said I didn't want to kick him off. I was worried that he would delete the channel, and he said he'd never do anything like that. We both agree that we acted rashly in the moment, and it was both our faults for falling out, and now we have to deal with the fallout of the falling out. But I told him that if he wants to come back, he could, and he said he didn't feel like that was going to happen. I didn't know what to say, and I still don't. I wanted to do this if and only if I could do it with Nate and Barney. And I still want to, even if Nate and Barney don't think the same way. I've been emotionally withholding from them for several years. I've played a character, a very mean character, a very wrathful character covered in thorns because I felt like if I got close to them and opened up, then they would have that power over me. And I wasn't about to let myself become vulnerable. And I wasn't going to let that part of me be hurt again. But look where that got me. I found out a few weeks ago that I was banned from the server. Uh, their bonsai server they had. I don't really know why. Uh, we didn't have another big fight. I think it's all a plot against me, and I think they know what they're doing. But I could be paranoid. I don't know. And honestly, I don't really care anymore. If Nate wanted to talk to me, if he wanted to come back to the channel, then he should have, he should talk to me. But he clearly doesn't care, so why should I? I'm working on something new now. It's a project I've wanted to do for a while called Sinful. It's an animated comic with fully voiced characters and a storyline. I'm planning to have eight episodes plus a prologue and with those episodes all separated into three parts since I realize now how long it takes to animate and I've been working on this prologue for a couple months now. It's been taking me a while and a lot of work but I want to be able to get videos out somewhat consistently. I wanted to get it out there, so I'm going to be releasing more cash grabs in the future, sorry about that. But I really want this to spread and get the message out. I put a lot of work into this, and I don't want the fight between Nate and me to be a consistent sore thumb sticking out in the channel. I just want to make the animations that I feel are good content, content that I can be proud of, and I don't want to let this channel die because of infighting. So that's the past, future, and present of Living Do. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope you stick around to see what we have coming up. See ya!